It's, it's probably been spoken of already enough, but I feel compelled to, to take the last five minutes and just... I, I, I am always concerned about how much warfare prophetic people seem to go through. And I, I want to say that a lot of things mirror demons that have nothing to do with spiritual warfare like a lack of sleep if you don't sleep enough and i'm telling you by experience i wish i was telling you something i read in a book you will start to get crazy you will see things that aren't real you'll feel things that aren't reality and one of one i have done in the last 10 years since i crashed 11 years ago the second time in my life i've crashed in my 64 years when someone comes up and they begin to describe to me, like, I have this demonic stuff, and I, I stop them and I say, how many, hours a week, how many hours a night do you sleep on average? I can hardly sleep. Okay. I can't separate how much of this is demonic from how much of this is hallucinations from you not having enough sleep. And, it's, and we're not going to be able to separate it until you get enough sleep. And there are just things, because, you, you know, we talk about spirit, soul, and body, the truth is, is that you can't separate spirit, soul, and body. Like you don't have an experience in your, in your soul that doesn't affect your body and your spirit. And vice versa. So part of the challenge is when you have any kind of experience for any length of time, it becomes tridimensional. The question is, where is it rooted? If I don't sleep for a month and a half, I'm going to have demonic dreams. When I do sleep, I'm going to have demonic hallucinations. I'm going to have demonic visitations. And the crazy thing is, I don't even know, I don't know when I'm talking to this person, if those are real or if they're imagined. Because the enemy also likes to come to us in weak times. So what I'm getting at is this, is that you need to have a good plan to take care of yourself. I'm talking to you as a dad now. We're off the core value thing. I want to finish with this thought. You need to take good care of yourself. You need rhythm. You need rest. Uh, um, Robert Morris, you know who Robert Morris, Morris is, Gateway Church? He called me one day. And I mean, I mean we're, not, we're not close friends. He calls me one day and he says, I have a prophetic word for you. I said, okay, what, wow, that's interesting, you know? I mean, we're, we don't have that kind of relationship. I said, great, what is it? He said, do you realize that keeping the Sabbath was the fourth commandment? Before thou shalt not murder and I said, yeah. He said, you're not doing that. You're not keeping the Sabbath. And the Lord says that you need to take rest seriously. So now Fridays, this Friday will be an exception, but it is an exception. But Fridays and, and Mondays, Saturdays, Fridays, Saturdays, Mondays. I, I, I play basketball every Friday that I'm not doing something like this. I play basketball every Monday. It's on my calendar. My team knows. Don't call me then. Don't try to get me in a meeting, and unless it's an emergency, I won't do it. You know why? I need exercise. I need rest. Like, you actually want me to have that break. I need to learn how to set boundaries. I need to learn how to say no. I need to realize that if I let people dictate my life, I will never do what I'm called to do. I'll only do what they want me to do. I have to learn how to say no. I have to, and I am an overly responsible person, and I live with a more overly responsible person. And so we have a culture of over committing ourselves. And I have a gate at my house. It's all proactive. It's not for looks. I have 2,500 students who they would anytime love to just show up while they're in the neighborhood. I'm like, no, I'm sorry. I actually proactively have not wanted to be with you. I have a to-do list and a not-to-do list, and I have a to-be-with list and a not-to-be-with list. True story. I, I was on the couch for six months, depressed, completely depressed, couldn't get off the couch. And at the, the, in the fifth month, the Lord spoke something to me, and it, be, it was my first glimmer of hope. I didn't want to live. The Lord said to me, here's the first thing he said to me, you are not the savior of the world. First thing he said to me, you are not the savior of the world. I am. Two days later, he said this to me, there's always enough time to me to do everything I, I gave you to do. So if you're exhausted, 
It isn't because I gave you all that to do. It's because you took on other people's commitments. Now I have this great big, I will not overcommit. I will not overpromise and underperform because I can't sleep with that. I can't even sleep with that incongruency. People ask me all the time, can I meet you? Uh, several of you, and by the way, I hope, I hope this, I hope I wasn't at all rude. I tried, I'm trying not to be at all rude. But people, can I just meet with you for five, five minutes? I've probably had 25 people in here ask me that. And I said, if, if you're here, you know I said, I won't promise that. I can't promise that because I know I can't meet with 25 people, even for three minutes. First of all, if I had enough time, I don't have enough soul. I can't be here at 8 in the morning, get home at 11 o'clock at night, and have this many people, and Dan and I be in charge of all this stuff, and have enough soul to take care of everyone's want. I just don't have it. I don't have it in me. You don't either. And what I'm getting at is sometimes you don't know that until you run out of you. And then when you run out of you, you go, okay, oh, I ran out of me. I ran out of me. And then, you, then you're like, okay, I have to back up and find. Now I know where my edge is because I fell off of it. And I'm simply saying, I'm just trying to say as a father, you got to have rhythm. You got to do the only that you got to do in this season what you can only do in this season and make that a priority for instance your children you have children in your house i say to all of our leaders you got to do in this season what you can't do in any other first you can't do children twice you don't get to do children when you have time for them and everybody who's above the age of 50 goes yeah they leave quickly I'm sorry, I know this isn't on the menu, but I feel compelled to talk to you like this. I feel so strongly like you have to build a rhythm. You have to get out of being afraid of people. You have to figure out a nice way to say to people, no, I'm sorry, I can't do that. You have to have a whole group of people that you just won't meet with at all. I don't meet with students. I don't meet with a congregation. Oh, you're so, we have 11,000 people in our congregation. There's no possible way if I open that door, I could ever fulfill it. And that was, I learned that from six months on the couch because I tried to meet everyone's need and I found out that even though I had enough time, in some days, I didn't have enough soul. You know, part of the challenge in 21st century is we live off a clock and a calendar, but we never factor in how I'm gonna feel. I have a really, really sensitive uh, PA. She's not in the room right now, her name's Mary. and. Mary's watched my life. And Mary will sit me down and say, you have a two-hour space on Friday. You asked me to put Joe in there. But the first three meetings you have, those are tough meetings. I can tell you that you're going to be exhausted. If you take that fourth meeting, you're going to go home completely wiped out. And she will watch me thinking through, oh, you're going to love these meetings. I love vision meetings, I love building meetings, but these three people that all got on the calendar on one day, they're all problems that you're supposed to solve and they're tough problems, you know they are. When you get out of those meetings, your brain will be fried. You will not want to meet with anyone else. I propose that you do not meet with that other person. And you need people that will help watch over you, who understand you, and I, I, I've had PAs who are like, you have one more, you have two more hours and this person's been bothering me. Like, you should meet with them. She's like, it's not that big a deal. It's only the president of the United States. He's got lots of other counselors. <laughs> That's a dream I have, but it's not real. I've been speaking it out there as if it is. Awesome. Would you stand? Let me pray for you. Did I take someone else's time? Uh, okay, great. I Because I, I, went, I went over seven minutes. Okay, great. Can I pray for you? I, I'm just, I just have it in my heart just to pray for you as a father. Like nothing really spiritual, just pray for you as a father. That the Lord would give you wisdom. I just pray right now. Would you just put your hand on your heart? I just pray for God that he would just give you wisdom that you would manage your life so that you go from faith to faith and glory to glory, and that when you go through something hard, or you have a disappointment, which how many know you can't leave without having a disappointment, hello? 
that you deal with it right and you bring closure to it so it, it doesn't trouble you your whole life. It doesn't get passed onto your children, that you don't pass offenses onto your team and your people. God, I just pray that you would give us wisdom for rhythm in our life. God, we all live with a deep sense that we need significance, but sometimes it's at the cost of our souls. Lord, I pray that there would be no martyrs in here. Lord, if somebody kills us, it wouldn't be because we tried to get killed. <laughs> and we try to give ourselves to that. Lord, we want to live for you. And Lord, we pray that you would give us insights into how to make sure our family benefits from our relationship with you. That our family loves that we're prophets and prophetesses and prophetic people because our gift so benefits our family. And God, I pray that you'd protect the hearts of these people. I pray wherever there's lenses that are cracked or scratched or, or colored the wrong color, God, I pray that you would come in and that you would heal the brokenhearted. That you would take the logs out of our eyes. That you would clear our, pers our perspectives and our perceptions. And God, I pray that we would all live with great joy. That our houses would be the happiest houses in the neighborhood. That we would be known for joy and not even for our insights. That our children would say of us, my dad, my mom, they were the happiest people. I grew up in a happy house. Lord, I just pray for that. That the joy of the Lord would be our strength. That the kingdom of God is not eat or drink, but it is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Let our house be a house of laughter. Let our friends be people who are fun to be with. Lord, I break obligations off of our people here that you did not put on them. I break obligations with miserable people. Oh, I wasn't being funny. Miserable people. I'm sorry, I wasn't actually being funny. Sometimes we get yoked to miserable people. People who are in misery are different than miserable people. People that just, you know, their goal is misery loves company. I'm not ready to change, but I want you to be miserable with me. Lord, teach us how to mourn with those who mourn, but teach us how to not be miserable with those who are miserable. Lord, we bless people that are going through tough times. Help us to not run from their pain. But Lord, people who choose a life of misery, Lord, let us separate ourselves, at least in soul, from those people and especially an obligation. And Lord, we bless our people in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much.